the orange light of avarice, wielded by only one. He is Laughley's. But who is Laughley's? And why is there no other members of the Orange Lanterns? What's going on everyone? Uh, today we're going to look at another awesome lantern, Laughley's. Uh, the Orange Lantern of Greed. Again, one of my favourite lanterns and I just love what Jeff Johns did with this story arc. So, Laughley's first appeared back in 2008 um, from the minds of, as we mentioned, Jeff Johns. Um, he was brought in to be part of the Blackest Night story arc, which um, was a huge multi-series um, event for the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, we didn't fully actually see Laughley's until 2009. Uh, before that, he was just in snippets of his uh, incoming. Um, he appeared in the issue Agent Orange. Um, of course, uh, Agent Orange is the name the Guardians had given him. Now, a quick backstory into Laughley's. Uh, he is actually believed to be over a billion years old, which is absolutely crazy. His uh, species is supposed to be one that does last that long, but as a child, he was taken um, from his parents and forced into a brutal, brutal slavery, um, one that you couldn't imagine. Um, in doing so, he would see his captors and he saw the love that his captors had for their possessions and he started to go crazy wanting what they had, uh, the materialistic gain. He even himself believed that he could hear their items talking to him and uh, now this was even before any sort of orange lantern greed had gone on so um, it was a very foretelling backstory. Um, so Laughley's and a few of his friends managed to escape this slavery. Uh, they escaped into space and set up a guild of space thieves. Uh, they ended up getting their hands on a box which um, apparently held an entire universe inside of it. Um, this grabbed the attention of the Guardians, um, who at this point didn't have the Green Lantern Corps. They were using the Manhunters, and the Guardians set the Manhunters after this group. In the first encounter with the Manhunters, the group barely survived. They were absolutely slaughtered. Um, however, Laughley's and a few of them found a map from the Guardians when they were in the battle. Um, one, they had this, they used this basically to follow where it had an X marks the spot, as all good treasure maps do. It took them to a planet in the Vega system called Akara, which is um, very important in the future of Laughley's. Uh, on this planet, they found a temple, and inside the temple was the orange light of Avarice. Now this light immediately corrupted the whole group. They went insane trying to kill each other, um, trying to just be the only person that could hold on to the light. Uh, in, as this fight was going on, the Manhunters re-arrived. However, the last two survivors of the fight themselves, Laughley's and um, Toa, um, defeated the Manhunters who followed them there. The Guardians, seeing how strong these two had become, uh, made a pact with them, say, basically saying, we'll leave you with this orange light, but give us that box, and never leave this space sector again, and we will never come near you again. Of course they agreed to this, and Laughley's handed over the box. Um, it is later said that Laughley's was telling Hal Jordan that the box itself was supposed to hold the Parallax entity at the time, and that's why the Guardians were so insistent on getting that box as we know parallax is the entity of fear now we jump forward uh, to the prelude to the blackest night which is where we officially meet laughley's in well at that top point the present day um in a quest for knowledge more and more people are exploring the universe and more and more power rings are being discovered uh, it ends up being that a uh, yellow lantern ventures into the Vega system and um, followed by a green lantern hunting them. Now, despite being warned, they still went through that system. What happens is Laughley's immediately jumps in and absolutely obliterates the member of the uh, Sinestro Corps and ends up wounding the green lantern, uh, recognizing it's a green lantern and the pact he had. He, rather than kill them, branded them with the symbol of the Orange Lantern Corps. And then he sent them off into space just to float till someone would find them. Obviously the Green Lanterns found them, brought them back to Oa to look after them. And as the Guardians were looking at this figure with this brand on it, uh, the brand started to glow. And out of it a huge orange construct of Laughley's emerged in front of the Guardians. Uh, he declared that the pact was over due to them invading his space. 
and um, the, the orange power battery was his alone and no one was allowed to get near it. Obviously he believed they were coming for his battery. Now that the pact was over, uh, a war was about to begin. The Green Lanterns um, versus the Orange. Now the Green Lanterns put together a huge task force. This also included Hal. Hal at this point was dual wielding the Green Lantern Ring and a Blue Lantern Ring of Hope. Uh, at this point he hadn't mastered the Blue Ring yet, so it was not sure how this would help him. Uh, there was a huge battle basically between Laughleys and his Construct forces and the Green Lanterns. Now the Green Lantern's constructs were doing nothing against the orange, so it was up to Hal who had this new ring on. Uh, Laughly, seeing this ring, just wanted it for himself. He touched it once and was like, this is interesting, I want this. Um, so there was, the battle just kept going on. It turns out the blue ring of hope was amplifying the power of the green ring, which was helping Hal just maintain himself against Laughly, who had the whole power of a core at this point is the sole lantern. During the battle, uh, Hal touches the orange um, power core and uh, feels just all the greed flowing through him. Now, usually this would drain another lantern of their ability, but not Laughley's. He had been in contact with the core for so long, it was all just running through him. Hal manages to subdue Laughley's and uh, removes the ring. However, rather than uh, dispose of him, he gives the ring back to Laughley's and basically says, let's make a new pact with you. Um, Basically, the pact is that we'll go back to leaving your universe alone. We, sorry, your galaxy alone. We will not touch the orange ring, but I will need your help with things in the future. If the things are going the way they are going, um, in doing so, Lifely's actually got his first friend in over a billion years, uh, which um, it's quite funny. I do enjoy Lifely's and Hal's interactions throughout the Blackest Night and Brightest Day story arcs. Unfortunately, yes, they won't enter into the Vega system anymore. However, Laughley's at the end of this series is seen attacking the Blue Lantern's home world. He still wants that ring. The Blackest Night. Now, in this story arc, Laughley's is recruited by Hal um, as one of the core leaders to combat the Blackest Night and Necrom and his arrival. Uh, on the Battle on Earth, the Guardians decide that there's just not enough rings and not enough power available so they decide to start duplicating everyone's rings um Laughley's himself not a big fan of this because obviously he is the sole wielder of the light of avarice um so they make him an extra ring which finds lex luthor um again Laughley's not happy about this he's like why would you choose this person um they bicker and fight throughout the battle him and lex but they end up working together to defeat the the evil um when finally the war is over, you see Laughley's returning Lex to the Guardians and demanding that his ring is taken off. Sinestro actually makes a cheeky remark that this is the first time he's ever seen Laughley's give something to someone rather than take it. The Brightest Day, uh, follow up to the Blackest Night. Uh, whilst on Earth, he's hunting for Santa Claus, obviously. He's heard this man gives out gifts, and of course, mine, mine, mine. Laughley's wants these gifts. Uh, his, bow, his power battery is taken by Hector Hammond, Green Lantern nemesis, um, and his entity is freed from the, the lantern. It turns out that Laughley's and the entity don't actually get on that well. Um, in a bid to recapture his entity, Laughley's tests again team up with Hal Jordan and they go on an adventure. He ends up being there when uh, Carol Ferris becomes the queen of the Star Sapphires. Um, and at the end of the adventures, Laughley's finds out that his family is still alive uh, for him, which is amazing, and that they want to actually see him. I've glossed over a few things of what actually happens in the brightest day there, but uh, that's Laughley's main story points. So when we get to the new 52 and Rebirth, uh, Laughley's already established. Uh, Carl Rayner reaches out to Laughley's to help um, understand how to harness the orange light. Um, Originally, Laughley's obviously declines because why would he teach anyone about his powering? Uh, but Carol Ferris said that she would help him find his family. He begrudgingly accepts and helps train Hal, um, who, oh, sorry, helps train Kyle, who is uh, going to become the White Lantern. Uh, Volflume, the first Lantern, um, emerges uh, with the Third Army. He captures Laughley's and, and attempts to trick him into trapping him in versions and different realities. However, Laughley's connection with the Light of Avarice is so strong that he manages to see through all these um, 
see through all these visions and he manages to break free. Uh, joins the battle to help fight Volflume and for his reward, Hal entrusts him with the secrets um, as a reward that only he and Hal would know. Um, the secret being that two of the Guardians, Gamfit and Sage, are actually still alive um, and they're going to start rebuilding the Lanterns and that's a secret Laughly thinks very proudly of himself that he knows and only he and Hal would know. So, powers and abilities. He is the sole wielder of the Orange Ring and the Light of Avarice. Uh, he utilizes his greed is arguably the strongest soul lantern that you see wielding one ring in the whole um, universe. He could create constructs of everyone he has killed by the orange light uh, and thus um, he has his own army and his core. But uh, what's interesting about these constructs is they are free thinking so that they have their own thoughts. He can create them a whole army and just um, let them go to battle for him. Now he, now he is super effective against the green constructs, but uh, he can't absorb the blue or indigo, so they're his two weakness tribes. Um, due, due to exposure to the core, he can construct a whole army and maintain it. That is incredible. Uh, also, his ring it, and his connection to the core is so strong that when all the rings were leaving members of different cores and going to Carl Rayner, uh, the orange ring itself did not leave Laughley's. It was the only ring that stayed on someone just because his connection to it was so strong. And um, that's how his part in The Brightest Day actually came about. The orange ring is described as a parasite as um, it needs someone as a host who is very greedy. Luckily it did find Laughley's as he's one of the greediest characters pre-ring that we've seen throughout the comics. And there we go, a brief history of Laughley's. Um, Again, one of my favourites throughout the comics. Would love to see more Laughly storylines or just get him involved again. Um, would love to see him battle some of DC's other heroes. Great to see how he goes up against Superman or characters of that ability. Uh, but for me, Green Lanterns um, and the Lantern story arcs are some of my favourite. Uh, Laughly's, I always thought, was a great addition. Especially the uniqueness that he is a soul lantern and how jealous he gets of even anyone thinks about wielding one of his rings so yeah thank you for listening um if there's any story arcs i've missed out that you thought were great let me know any facts i've missed let me know again i always love learning about these characters so yeah just um if you like what i'm doing give me a thumbs up give me a follow and um yeah leave a comment cheers